Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the beginning of a brand new walking series that begins right here on the Cumbrian coast. I am in the village of St Bees and of course this is the Wainwrights coast to coast walk. So this route is 192 miles that begins at St Bees Head and ends at Robin Hood's Bay on the Yorkshire coast. And as tradition I have selected my pebble from the beach and dipped my toes in as well. And this first day is 14 and a half miles that ends at Ennerdale Bridge. And where I'm heading now is up onto St Bees Head. And I'm going to enjoy some of these fantastic coastal views. So we are right up on the cliff tops at the moment, only sort of three quarters of a mile in and the view is just stunning. Let me show you in this direction, which is the way we're going. Look along the coast here. That's some Bees Lighthouse right over in the distance, probably two miles away. We're going to head round that later, but we must be probably two or three hundred feet up now above the crashing waves. And we're right by what I think is some kind of World War II lookout station or something like that. There's a few bits of rubble here which has probably come off the top. Another large chunk here and a few bits further down the cliff. So I imagine this was a lookout. And inside there's actually a couple of plaques that show what you can see from here. If I go round in this direction. Apparently you can see the Isle of Man. Now it's really hazy but I think I can see the Isle of Man out there just about. Hopefully it'll clear a bit later. And then this direction, I should be able to see Scarpel Pike in, if it was clear, about 16 miles away. And then up this way, Scotland, about 25 miles away in that direction. So we're just at Felswick Bay and I can see down to the sea just over here and at this point you pretty much get down to sea level before having to go back up about another 100 metres but Wainwright does recommend you actually go and have a little look if the tide's out but at the moment it's really far in and there's some really interesting rock formations in there and I know it's quite a popular bouldering place as well.
So sitting just 150 yards from the trail is the lovely white St. Bees Lighthouse, which is just up there. I can see the top. Now this building dates to 1866, but it's been known there's a lighthouse on the site here since 1717. And apparently you can see the light for 25 miles out to sea. We've just entered the village of Moor Row and the original route would have gone through the village but now the route's actually been diverted onto this. This is the line of the old railway that used to service all the industries in the area. This is going to be followed for about a mile until the other side of Moor Row where we'll come off and then follow some footpaths over to Cleta and there I'm going to stop at the shop and get something to eat because I'm getting pretty hungry.
So we just arrived in Cleta and I had to come and see this lovely historic building. This is the Church of St. Leonard and it's a grade two listed building that on the outside looks relatively modern. I think it was built around 1860, somewhere around there, but the core of the chancel is actually 12th century. So clearly this building replaced a much older church on the site. It's absolutely lovely built of the classic red sandstone of the area. So we have made it to the summit of our first peak. This is the top of Dent and there's a cairn just behind me here. The true summit at 352 meters is just a few hundred meters actually over there. Heading that way in just a moment, but I thought I'd stop here because the view is a lot better, I think. There's a nice big shelter as well, so if the weather is bad, got some protection. But the view, not a good day, is normally exceptional. Today, it's a bit hazy. I can make out some of the Cumbrian coast down there. It's the south coast. And this is Sellafield, the world's first nuclear power station. And then if I pan round, I would imagine this large town down here is probably Egremont. And continue round the very end here. You can see a little kind of cleft. It's just, that is the cliffs just above uh, St. Bees. So that is where we started and we followed the path all the way around St. Bees Head before coming through Moore Row and Cleeter just down here and then up the steep side of the fell. Now just a little note for anyone who is doing this walk. There's a permissive path down here which goes through a farm and that's all been closed off. There's signs up saying sort of no trespassing etc and we actually had just had to make our way to the road a different way. So Parts of the trail have actually been closed down there. I don't know why, real shame. And then looking this way to the east, this is, of course, the view to the Lakeland Fells. I can see just down to Ennerdale Bridge, the end of today, which will be down in a couple of hours time. But for now, I'm heading over this little summit here, down into the Valley of Nanicatch, and then over towards Kinneyside Stone Circle for a little view of an ancient, potentially ancient remains. But let's go have a little look. We made it down off the steep slopes of Dent, so just be careful that slope on the way down is quite treacherous. If it's wet, thankfully right now it's dry, so we made it off quite safely. And I'm in the valley of Nanicatch, and this marks the entrance to the Lake District National Park, the first on the coast to coast. And I'm going to follow this for just over a kilometre before heading up the steep valley side up to Kinneyside Stone Circle.
So we are now entering the village of Ennerdale Bridge, which marks the end of this part of the trail. So if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and also ring the bell to keep up to date with future uploads. And I'll see you in part two.